Right. Hello. Good evening or afternoon or whatever time of day it is for you. Hope everybody's doing great. I'm Linnell Ingram, Pink Fumes channel live stream. We are going to do some sketchbook messing around today. And yeah, that's our plan. I have some random things uh, not sketched yet. Obviously it's a sketchbook, so I will be sketching it with you with some ideas and references around for inspiration. And today I have made myself a cup of matcha, matcha tea, which is uh, I, the box of matcha I have, I've had for a while and I it didn't have directions. It has directions for using it in a smoothie, but no instructions for just brewing a cup of tea. And last minute, I decided to look it up and I'm glad I did because in my mind, I'm all, well, you know, how hard can it be? Like what, a tablespoon of matcha and uh, and then top it with hot water? It says a half a teaspoon. So apparently if I had gone about it my way, <laughs> I might not be handling it very well. But yeah, let's get this. I put a little um, milk in it and it makes it a slightly prettier color, full soy milk, but um, all in all, it's a lot more grayish than the greenish color I have seen on it, but I don't know, it must have sold. But not bad, really not bad. And I've never been a tea drinker, so it's just weird. Here I am drinking tea, um, eh, rather than coffee in the evening. Try something new. Very comforting. All right, I today have my mixed media sketchbook. This is a Strathmore mixed media. Strathmore has kind of been a go-to for me in that they are generally uh, affordable and good quality. They have different series and for qualities. They have like a 200 series, a 300 series, and they even have a 400 series maybe more than that, but um, I kind of go me middle of the line. So not too cheap, but also not entirely breaking the bank, ideally. So mixed media is actually, it's a vellum surface, so it can handle wet and dry medium. So I did one test painting on here before, just messing around. I actually use these new, relatively new paints I have that are, um, watercolors. They're kind of a pearlescent thing I got on sale at a store and decided to just try them out. So I was using new paints on new paper when I tested it and uh, it was it's a little different painting with watercolor on this particular paper and I don't know how much of it is just the paper. I think mostly the paper but it sort of just pushes around. It's hard to build up and get Dark darks, especially with a palette like this, just doesn't have very dark colors. They're all just kind of highly pigmented, lighter shades of things. So trying to get shadows built up was a little bit more challenging. And then I went back in with some ink and uh, the ink is very kind of dulled on the paper, which is also kind of interesting. But yeah, the, that um, sheen on here it's kind of cool, <laughs> so I will give it that. So, yeah, I don't have, this isn't a fancy moleskin type sketchbook or anything like that. Just, just a basic mixed media little sketchbook. I have a drawing here that I did of my cat one day when he was sleeping, because, you know, it's not very cute when they're asleep, generally. Of course, even when he's sleeping, he doesn't stay in the same position very long. So I only got a quick sketch done of him before he moved around. But I thought I might try putting down some uh, some color on this to start with and then work into some maybe other sketches as we go. And as <laughs> sketchbook is a perfect place to play around, I'm going to experiment with some of the gouache paint that I recently bought. So here's my drawer of Arteza gouache. It says it's premium. I have no idea. Um, let's see, what color shall we use? Take out the black, but I don't know if I'll use it. Maybe forest green instead of black, if I'm any of that at all. 
purple, some bubble bee yellow, and so it's, that's a nice set of, uh, you know, kind of opposites on the color wheel. And then something in between somewhere. Maybe this guy, this coral red, but semi pink. It. Yeah, I think we'll try that. We'll go with it. Limited palette. Let's give it a try. Putting the paints in a place where they don't usually go, and I'm probably going to forget where they are in a minute. So, goes. I was actually away for a couple of days this last week, and I did not scream on on Thursday, which I normally do. I just put out a message, so hopefully nobody uh, showed up and was disappointed. But what was I going to say? <laughs> oh no. There it goes. Okay, here it comes. I got it back. I um, cleaned my studio before I left. It's like, you know, it'd be nice when I come back for everything to be well organized and clear spaces to work on things. But then immediately I started looking for something which I could not find. So it is rather important for me. <laughs> <laughs> to have everything in a dedicated spot that I'm aware of. Because I will not find something for years otherwise. Um, yeah, so God forbid I just stash something somewhere and think, oh, I'll remember that. I won't. I just found this brush that I've been looking for. Because I have a few really large canvases that I'm going to work with with uh, some either acrylic or oil. And I'm like, I know I have a really big two-inch brush somewhere. Where did I put it? And I put it somewhere, I think even before, before or during when I redid my, my studio entirely. I had a video about the, my resetting up of the studio. And yeah, it was uh, in a place that made no sense. Although at the time I put it there, probably made sense to me. And uh, randomly came across it not long ago when I kind of given up and on it existing anywhere, I just ordered another one, which I wonder where that one is. <laughs> uh, the irony is not lost on me. Well, I'm sure it'll show up. Anyway, I have a whole selection of stuff around me. I just put out some uh, acrylic gouache. I have some watercolors. I have all kinds of pencils and erasers. I have lots of different pens. This one's my personally my favorite. My Derwent Line Maker 0.05. These go really nice. Um, the only downside to these is that they are a little bit water soluble. So if you put a line down and then paint over it, you're gonna have some bleed. So need just to make sure that when I'm using this particular marker or um, liner that it's over whatever's wet and I'm done doing that. These microns work pretty well for uh, being kind of colored. They don't, they're waterproof. So a little bit better for using beforehand, but uh, my microns are all a little bit old. This one's like bent. I don't know if you can really see that. There's a little curve to it, probably from the bag I had it crammed in forever. Anyway, yeah. So I got all kinds of stuff everywhere around me kind of the idea of having the everything in an art studio anyway. So yeah, it's, uh, what are we doing? I have no idea. I barely have ever worked with these uh, gouache paints, so we're just gonna start down some color and uh, I don't have a reference or anything to work with because I can't move just as I drew this as soon as I finish that sketch. So, of course. It's like if I'm taking a picture of him just seems to know. Moves his head away. Like, nope. Put it camera down, the phone. Come back a minute later. Nope. Try to be sly about it. They just know what it isn't. No. I do like how nice this lays down uh, towel. Scraps for drying off the brush. It's too wet. 
It does lay down nice and smooth, but it also does dry really fast. So that's something like super fast, like almost even faster than acrylic paints. Seems to me anyway. But not less. Just kind of playing. I think a sketchbook is a great place to just to explore. If you mean to try out some new mediums and things like that, it's a good way to do it. And I think that uh, even in a regular sketchbook, regular paper, that you can paint one of the things you can do to make that work well is to gesso your paper. I have not experimented with doing that too much. I kind of just been, I just got this book semi recently. But I officially have to stop purchasing art supplies. I really do. I need to just got all these things to work with. Let's just use what you've got and stop getting seduced by all the new shiny things. I'm using a little uh, angle brush. This is a Winsor Newton angled six millimeter. I like it's a little longer bristles, so it's nice for working with water mediums. I should hold a decent amount of uh, paint or water. here. So just kind of uh, expanding upon having any kind of a uh, sketchbook habit at all, what my intentions are and what I accomplish when I'm painting or drawing in a sketchbook changes constantly. I start with one thing that I'm going to do and then I stick with it maybe for a week and then the next week it's something different, but who cares? There's no rules. I certainly can't put those rules on myself or I will never be able to accomplish anything. So sometimes you just gotta work with the way that you work. and see how that goes. I really, I did the Gusta Plimpt study on live stream and that was legit the first time I ever worked with these paints. So I am far from any kind of an expert about them. But I'm fascinated by them. I like the idea that they can be very matte and very saturated. So I'll just kind of keep playing around and see how it goes. It's really exploring the medium with very little expectation. So that's kind of my way of trying something and learning new new approaches and just seeing what happens with stuff.
when I was uh, out this last week for a few days, I had the opportunity to check out a few thrift stores. And what was cool with that was uh, I always am on the lookout for vintage magazines. And I got really, I got some pretty good finds. I think I picked up maybe six 1950s Life magazines. Pull this in a little bit. Maybe, how's that? Maybe a little better. Uh, I also got a couple of 1950s McCall's. And some 90s magazines, a Vogue and In Style. Uh, a health and it's like it's my ultimate thing I really want to find more 80s uh, some not I got a few 90s now which I'm quite happy about but some 80s magazines that are like women's or girls uh, like teen magazines to use for my collage work all in all I have enough to keep me in good shape for a little while and stop spending money on that. <laughs> that should be a good thing to do. Next, I mean, I tried painting with watch. The Gustav Klimt study I did was on. Um, canvas and now this is multimedia paper so maybe the next type of material that I need to practice it on or experiment with it on is probably watercolor paper And I'm still like working out how much of the paint should be on the brush, how saturated my line work should be, how much of it I want to be translucent, if at all. So there's still plenty of screwing around and learning. I should get some white paint out because all my colors are kind of very similar um, kind of level of the value of them. I think I'll do that. See. Most tiny and adorable palette, but it's not the most um, functional one in the world. But you know, for doing little things where I'm just screwing around with a couple colors, that works fine. very exciting to me to mess around with a new type of uh, paint medium, a new material. It can force something out of you or into you about 
approaching something a little bit differently, handling things in another way than you normally would. tools change, sometimes your approach has to change too. Yeah, this kid isn't allowed here today. Well, I'm probably noticing it mostly because I actually have the window open for once. It's like cool enough to get some fresh air in here. Which is great. It's been so hot and humid forever, it feels like. I've been mostly using uh, watercolor brushes when I'm using the gouache, and I wonder if a stiffer brush might not actually be a better option a little bit. So that's something else I will have to experiment with. I guess the purple is kind of my shadow tone, more or less, just because it's a little cooler. Not that it's terribly darker, but cooler. That's going to bundle it down a little bit transparent. I kind of like that. It has a nice flow to it too, which is quite satisfying when you get a good deal of the paint on the brush and just let it have a nice thick line. other types of like terminology the whole ASMR thing I don't know if that's still super popular like it was a couple years ago um, but the the sensory element of it existing as uh, possibly visual instead of just uh, like the audio sense of it 
there's a term for that. I'm trying to hold my palette so that you can see, so it's not off the camera a little bit what I'm doing. I'm being a mess mostly. See if I can just lay in some flat color. Let's see how that goes. Probably would need a couple layers to get a really nice solid and very, very flat approach to it. Flat effect. I would imagine. Kind of fun to play around with a limited palette like this. Sort of makes you think about more like color temperature and value more than sometimes when you get caught up in do I have the right shade? Am I rendering this correctly? I'm doing monochromatic, of course, also. So when I put on really heavy layers, this paper does kind of buckle a little bit. Kind of see there's a little bit of a dip happening here.
I'm getting it. I think it's probably decent enough considering I don't have a photo or anything to work with. I would like to add a couple little, get a smaller brush out and some just little tiny detail things maybe. I don't know. Not amazing. Not terrible. Just playing. not having any kind of a reference photo to work from doesn't certainly help in terms of capturing any level of realism or anything but it just has given me it was just a good opportunity to play around and uh see what I do with this new this medium this new to me stuff Maybe I just am not looking in the right places, but I haven't seen too many um, the online things about where people are talking about using acrylic gouache with any sort of tips or tricks or anything along those lines. I don't know if it's just not a terribly popular medium to work with or just nobody has thought to do it. interest maybe I think that might be fine. I don't know how much better I'm going to make this. Probably not much. Still getting the feel. I think 
I might actually uh, a second thought add a little um, darker tone shadow maybe Let's see. What might I use? Some navy blue. I have no idea what the like appropriate names of these paints are because they're not named like anything else. It's red is like ketchup or something along those lines, so it's really hard to uh, gauge. What maybe it's supposed what its equivalency is in about any other brand. So yeah, just looking for a little shadow or like right under him cast on the on the surface. It's kind of like that. It's a little bit more separation between my drawing and and the background, which uses similar colors. So there's my logic. <laughs> All right. Semi-okay painting of a cat in the books. Semi-okay. <laughs> hey, experimenting with gouache. I do enjoy the colors. All right. Ooh. My paint water is looking remarkably close to my tea. <laughs> All right, maybe not quite. Definitely looks much, that looks much darker on camera than my tea does. Okay, let's start a new page and maybe put away the gouache paints for the most part for now because it is far from a comfort zone for me. This is, I mean, pretty close to being dry already. And I do like the matteness. There's virtually no sheen, even though this paper is a vellum what, that kind of has a sheen to it. All right, I'm just gonna let that page hang out kind of like this so that I don't uh, smash it, like stick it to the page in front of it. All right, so, hmm, what next? Maybe we'll go portrait on this page and draw a person in the face. I got a couple of reference photos in front of me from just things I found on, on Pinterest or otherwise. Just real quick, spend a few minutes finding some things that looked interesting enough to do a drawing of. For sketchbooks, I like to do, um, I do so many portraits, but it's still kind of, it's still interesting to me to find an interesting face and color that in. So that's something I look for and enjoy doing. I'll keep that, try to keep that actually in the camera. Sorry. I probably need to adjust where exactly the camera is positioned above me, but that is not happening today. It's kind of a pain in the butt the way that I have it mounted.
I am working at coming up with brand new ideas for what my next piece will be. I have multiple actual painting paintings in process that have been in process for quite a while. Um, things that maybe I've gotten stuck on for some reason or um, I just haven't been excited about. I have one that has oil paints that I've been waiting forever for the my last layer to dry because that's another medium that's new to me and I'm still figuring out how to work with it properly. But no big deal. There is no timeline on that one, so just wait for it. And it's about there. So I could continue working with that. And that's, uh, so that one is kind of me working with oils and trying to figure out the how to there. My comfort zone lies primarily in acrylics and watercolor and uh, drawing and ink. Um, I work with collage incorporated with those things, but just doing oil paint and then having just recently bought some gouache. I haven't used gouache since I was in college and I remember in college not caring for it a lot. We got to set our foundation year, our freshman year, and it was uh, something that we primarily kind of used in our color theory class. So we do kind of the charts of mixing value and mixing complementary colors on it, like from one to the other, and then they meet fully in the middle, that sort of thing. And I just remember at that time not liking the what I read as like a dullness, the matness of it. Um, it without the <laughs> sheen that I was so used to that comes with working with uh, acrylics, it just felt very, very strange. It is going to be way too close. Yeah, for whatever reason, didn't appeal to me, didn't like it, but... Oh, hello one. I used to draw a lot, but I kind of lost the zeal for it. Lots of pressure and stuff. <laughs> How are you today? Yeah, I think um, we can put a lot of pressure on ourselves. This, like, idea, this perfectionist idea that if it's not going to turn out and be awesome, then I can't do it. The biggest trick that I came across to try to get over that is to truly treat my artwork like nobody's gonna see it and it doesn't matter. Like I am literally just playing around like maybe I would when I was a kid and I didn't know how to do anything. Uh, and kind of releasing the expectations that come with this needs to be Instagram ready, which is not easy to do it's not easy to let go of that but it with a little practice it does get easier just gotta make it fun for yourself again and again i know easier said than done but perfectionism in that way is kind of insidious and it causes us to be paralyzed and get and then do nothing even with things that we love or once loved or whatever so it's a great way it's a great tool to just um it is a great way to relax i think but uh, that's me you know um and just sort of lose yourself a little bit in something. If you can just be like, I don't need to show this to anybody and I'm gonna treat this like I'm just experimenting and it doesn't matter. Then you can actually let go a little bit and 
and really play with it and just start to like kind of embrace some creative flow again. And I do that <laughs> perhaps to my own detriment pretty publicly here on YouTube. I kind of just show all the good, the bad. I don't edit much out. Some things I do work, some things I do definitely don't work, but that's just real. And I am at least somewhat a professional and it's still, <laughs> you still have plenty of duds and restarts, redos, uh, ideas that don't quite work out, approaches that don't work out, realizing that you got something wrong in a sketch when you get to the point where you've gotten kind of a little bit too far with it to do a lot to repair it maybe. That certainly happens. And then you're kind of in that position of, oh, I guess maybe I have to start over or embrace the mess and uh, see, is, does it really have to be exact? I don't know, maybe. I do enjoy kind of playing off the, the wisdom of Bob Ross, where he would say that uh, there are no mistakes, just happy accidents. If I do something that is weird and isn't what I expected, can I still make it work, maybe? Oftentimes, you can. Sometimes you come out with something cooler in the end. Or more interesting, at least. still do some paintings for friends and family at Christmas. Oh, nice. That's a little wonderful. This last year, I painted a black and white portrait of Bones and Booth from the show Bones. Nice. That's awesome. With glow-in-the-dark skeletons. Ooh, I like that. That's very cool. Doing characters that you love is a great way to get back into it, too. I agreed to do a live painting this summer, at the end of this month, at a art, local art festival. Most of my fine art is not the best fit for some like smaller town type community art fairs, let's say. Um, some people don't like it. <laughs> uh, so I'm not having a booth or a tent, but I did agree to do a demonstration, so I'm trying to come up with an interesting subject to paint, a person. And thus far, I haven't gotten it yet. I'm going to need to get it relatively soon and start prepping for that. But it's, uh, yeah, I'd like to do somebody that's kind of recognizable to the average person, and so that's more like enticing to watch if you know who it is but we'll see i'll try to work on that i did do bowie last year that was a good one oh and then i painted some bob's burger stuff and everyone was like why don't you paint and draw as much anymore and i didn't really have an answer i think i'm just still uh, settling into my hobbies etc oh that's cool um it's we flip around and try different things and that's i think the best way we and some seasons, you're going to do something different, and that's cool. Ooh, how many people are going to be watching you paint? Do you know? I don't really know. Uh, the out, how many people show up for this, generally is fairly weather dependent. So if it's a nice day, it could be. Um, well, I think people are just walking around. There's people have tents where they're selling their artwork, and I'll just be one of the more like events that's happening that day. Oh. I don't know exactly how many people would be at any given time, but usually they have, I think they say about a thousand people or something that walk through the show if the weather's good. And certainly not everybody's going to care to watch me work, but I'm going to try to do something really big, uh, try to keep it interesting. So yeah, having somebody 
that's a good character that's kind of recognizable or a good person. Um, I've done a lot of historical people portraits before. I did, uh, I didn't do it on stream, but I did a Freddie Mercury and that was fun. And a Vivian Westwood I did on stream. So trying to figure out, I don't think many people would probably recognize it though who Vivian Westwood was, but just things along those lines. My partner was saying I should do maybe like The Witcher or something like that. Uh, I don't know. I don't usually do... I haven't done a lot of characters, but I certainly could. I have to think about it a little bit more. Just kind of... I want it to be fun and doable in a day. Like, painting outside can be a thing, especially depending on, again, if it's really hot, if it's really humid. All those factors. I saw a very cool David Bowie painting at an art show in my town this spring. It was the Ziggy Starman makeup. Nice. So he had red hair and the crazy eyeliner on. Oh, what did I do? There we are. Musicians are great models. Yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun to do. Um, Bowie is a great subject. I really love, I love his music and I love him as a person. Um, you know, I did. So when I, I painted, I actually started a painting of him at this same fair last year, but I didn't get that one done. We ended up closing the fair early because storms were coming. Uh, and then I ended up actually finishing it on stream when I first started doing live streams earlier this year. I finally got that painting out and finished it. But yeah, that's funny. That was, that one I sat on for a while, but I figured that was a good excuse to get it finished. I was pretty happy with how it turned out. It was the first time I've experimented with some found materials in my work. It's on that piece. I'm not sure. I'm seeing this from a little bit of an angle. I think that I'm getting her pretty well. Maybe I'll throw some pen on this one. That looks. I just love this girl's expression and her face structure. She's got like these kind of almost kind of bedroom eyes, a cute nose, and an interesting haircut. This is a good face. Oh, thank you. drawn lots and lots of faces over, well, especially over the last year and a half. Lots of faces. It's interesting. Faces are interesting to me. Color or just go with pencil or pen. That's the question. I 
haven't done tons of really highly rendered pencil work for quite a while. It's something I used to do a lot of, especially when I was learning. Pinterest is a pretty good place to find interesting pictures to just learn from and draw on. It can be kind of uh, tricky though if you want to do something with those pictures or anything you create from it because depending on who owns the photo like, there's issues of rights about ownership of the images. So it can be kind of tricky to try to create something from those that you can sell, like, legally or ethically, either way. But it's good for learning and playing and experimenting. I admit this mixed media paper is nice to draw on. It's very smooth. The Strathmore Drawing Book. All we have around here is Strathmore and Academy. It is. This is um, this is a Strathmore mixed media pad, so it's like a vellum surface. Uh, I'm pretty much a I'm pretty much a fan of the Strathmore books for workbooks. Um, not as much if you're interested in something that's going to be like your a beloved journal that you work on. Um, they're not pretty in that way. They're not like a nice bound book that, uh, you know, moleskins and things like that are, but I like that they're a little bit more of a workhorse. Like, I don't have to feel precious about it. And they do a good job, and their prices are uh, reasonable, or by and large. Yeah, very good all-purpose stuff. And I was in a in a different town, a locally owned art supply store recently, and I was just blown away by the sheer selection of art supplies, uh, sketchbooks, of different types of sketchbooks that they had. And I mean, I'm obviously I have this, I have multiple uh, watercolor sketchbooks, but they just had things that I'd never even thought about or heard of before, and it was really. Um, I could get lost like exploring all those things, but I could also spend a lot of money that I shouldn't, don't have to spend. <laughs> so I uh, picked up this book and a couple of brushes and then got the heck out of Dodge before I could do any more damage. But that was pretty cool. And I'm, and I am honestly kind of spoiled for art supply stores. There is a, a Dick Blick store uh, about two towns over from me, so not far. I go past it fairly regularly. And 
and uh, yeah, they have, they also have quite a lot. Uncle sent an amazing leather bound sketchbook from England. I'm too afraid to mark it up. Yeah, <laughs> that's one of the things about the nice sketchbooks. That feels, that can feel like pressure. I think it can. I'm definitely, that can be intimidating, but you know, you can make it a precious thing or just be like, hey, this was a wonderful gift and I'm going to use it. All that pressure just is, you know, it's ourselves, but I get it. When you have a beautiful book, it is a lot more pressure to feel like it needs to be good if it's going in here. Of just drawing in some of the darkest darks and shadows, trying to kind of make adjustments to the face as I'm going, as I need, feel like I need to. We have a hobby store that's the closest thing we have to an art store. Yeah, we definitely have those around. Michael's, Grutted Hobby Lobby. I've found, so, there are some pretty good online sources and then a pinch, I mean, Amazon. They have everything over there. There's still some things that I do order online just because of time constraints to get somewhere or something weird that I decide that I want to try that uh, isn't available or something like that in the area. Amazon is definitely not always the cheapest, that's for sure. which is kind of shocking, but there are getting art supplies from them can be really high for some things. And I think it's because maybe they're smaller items. I'm not really sure. But like with this pen, if you get a three pack of them on Amazon, it's a pretty good deal. But if you want to buy just one, it's $10. And that's crazy. I feel like I make the face that she's making when I go out to a restaurant and watch anyone that orders get orders taken before our table even gets noticed. Oh no, <laughs> I can feel feel the hanger. <laughs> yeah, it is very much that kind of like uh, that kind of an expression. <laughs> yeah, going out amongst the peoples that can be a bit of a can be a thing. And to do a lot of, if I'm getting food, it's a lot of takeout stuff, generally, so I don't have to sit at the restaurant. I have a tendency to just want to like bring it home and get back to things, and that I need to work on better separation of work and life balance kind of stuff. Because doing this kind of work at home. It always feels like there's more that I want to accomplish, more to do, and never enough time. So trying not to like 
guilt yourself into just working all the time is something that takes some reminding yourself over after a while. $10, yeah, that $10 for that pen. That's what I'm saying. Like some things, if you're buying something that's like a set or a larger collection of things, I think you can do okay on Amazon for some art supplies and stuff. But if you need something that's small, it just, they're going to try to make their money on it even when it's a small thing. So it's rarely economical to go that route. Thus far, I've been doing all of this with a 2H pencil, and I could, at this point, probably switch to a different, heavier weight. Yeah, as long as I'm going to talk about it. What do we got? Most of my heavyweight pencils are in another inner. That's charcoal. You go in the far opposite direction and pull out a 90 really soft guy and start getting those. Yeah, oh, that feels nice. Feels really smooth and nice. <laughs> I'm just 2B all the way. I do a lot with the 2Bs, and I will admit that this is still what I grab about half the time the old school mechanical pencils are just it's just a 2b nothing fancy but it's dark enough to get your darks but not easily smear it just kind of it's a good kind of all-around pencil to carry with you <laughs> so that's kind of been my go-to a lot of the time And when I do get going on something, on a drawing, I can get a little like tunnel vision with it. And then I forget that I had intentions to maybe try a different material or a different pencil or anything like that. So that's kind of funny. I have a whole box of these types of pencils in a drawer and they're stashed everywhere I have them in. Any bag I would possibly carry out of the house, purse, backpack, anything, overnight bags, I have them in this container, in drawers, in a drawer in the living room, there's a bunch of them. They just are very handy. Half of them are missing the erasers. And yeah, it's forever and forever I've had those things. I might try blending this a little bit, see how that goes on this paper. feel like it will blend nicely, probably. Resisting the urge to just throw my fingers in there and make a huge mess because that is like where my brain just defaults to as what to do.
Yeah, she has this kind of like a like a new style mullet sort of thing happening. Done. I love it. Alright, let me find a blending tool. Should just be right here. There we go. Just little, I forget what these are called, little blenders that are made in China, apparently. Buy a big pack of them for quite cheap. I think somewhere around two bucks or something like that when I bought them. So that 9B pencil, because it's super soft, blends pretty nicely in here. that and then go back in and maybe add a few more hard lines after I blended it out. I think I can layer it up to get quite dark really. shocked that I'm saying this, but I have thought about maybe trying to have a mullet <laughs> like this. I just love these. I have a long way to go in growing up my hair, though, to be able to do it like this, but it's just interesting. I did an undercut, like a full undercut, where it was just the hair on top of my head for years. For a lot of years, I did that. And now it's become... Uh, seems to become pretty common. I see it a lot more. In the summer or the fall before the pandemic shut down, I was at a concert. And it was it was a dark waves show, so it's, you know, 90s industrial kids all growing up and pulling out their goth best attire to relive the glory days. And listen to some live front 242 that sort of thing and i just remember oh my god like everybody has this exact same haircut now and i decided to try to grow it out at that point so i'm like yeah time for something different anyway and i cut my hair really really short to help grow it out and then i keep getting to like some stage of the grow up phase and then i chop it all off again because i can't stand it anymore and I'm really trying to just, just pull through, just suck it up, deal with it, get through it. I'm really trying. I tend to wear a lot of the bandanas and things and so as it tries to get out there, tries to get somewhere. But we'll see. I don't know. I was actually just thinking about caving and doing this exact same thing again with like the sides. Because oh, it's just so annoying to like hate bear all the time, but I don't know, whatever. We'll get it there. It's one of the less concerns that there is in the world. What to do with your stupid hair. Actually, before this stream, this is kind of funny. It's a little bit humid, and since I don't have my hair in a, uh, what do you call it, in a bandana. I think her forehead's really big, isn't it? Oh my goodness, it really is. 
I met her an alien. Um, I decided like, oh, maybe I'll put some hairspray on it to kind of keep it in place. And I don't use a lot of hair products by and large. I just am not good at hair stuff. Just go on the priority list. Things to worry about. So I pulled out from under the cabinet. It's very old. It's literally Aquanut. It's what your grandma used. And I spray a little bit of it and it's straight up like snows on my head. Like this stuff was just solidified in the bottle. I didn't even know it would come out of a nozzle like that. So that was, that was fun. I can definitely get a little cheap when it comes to that sort of thing. I just keep spending money on that. This is also why I've been cutting my own hair for more than 15 years. Now, trying to fix her shape of her head here. It's weird because I'm looking at this from looking at this from an angle, so it looks right to me, but then when I see what's on the camera, it's like, oh, what did I hear an insect? mean to do that. I'm even use the eraser to kind of blend it a little bit too. I paint and draw kind of standing over my desk. I normally don't go from this angle, but while I'm streaming and I have the camera kind of down on the table, I tend to do this a little bit more to try to have the best view of what I'm working on. But then I do need to remember to like look at what the camera is seeing besides just what I think I'm doing. getting closer. Then go in and I'll have it add a few little highlights in the hair. of a reverse drawing situation. Imagine the weird experience this girl would have if she was just idly flipping through live streams and then she saw you drawing her portrait. Oh yeah, I, I don't know if she'd recognize herself, <laughs> to be honest, when I'm looking at the picture. I don't know how well at this point I've really captured her, but um, yeah, that would be surreal. I suspect by the photograph that she's, she's probably a photo that a lot of people have kind of taken on trying to draw. There's my cat. Hi, Watson. 
he gets bored and comes and says hi. I'm just gonna do a quick greatest thing I've ever done, but it's definitely interesting to draw on this paper, and I kind of love the going back and forth with the super soft pencil and the eraser to blend a little bit. Well, thank you. I appreciate that one. Well, here, come here. Oh, you want to say hi to everybody, Mr. Watson? Mm -hmm. He's an Abyssinian, well, part Abyssinian, so he's uh, very, very needy and social and gets into trouble when he's bored and not getting enough um, stimulation. Right? Yeah. So to the guy who's jumped into my paintings before on more than one occasion. <laughs> okay, let's see. I think I'm just gonna make a little bit more of a correction here and I always do this. I'm like, oh, I think I'm done. I'm just going to do this one more thing, and then it becomes a whole ordeal. What is it done anyway? a positive review of your art <laughs> and lots of hair <laughs> in his wig <laughs> as well. Whew. Always in my nose. Always cat hair in the nose. Goodness, thank you. He also, uh, we give him a little food at the end of the night before bedtime. We're usually around 9 30 um, so that he will, you know, not want to wake me up at 4 30 in the morning to feed him. So he's uh, looking for that, I don't know. When it comes to cats, the heart wants what the heart wants, and the heart usually just wants food. And attention, and scratches, and pets, and playtime. so sure about where this one was going for a while, but I kind of think I'm relatively happy with it at this point. I brought her back around to looking less insect alien-like, <laughs> at least a little bit. Oh my gosh, what are you doing? Okay, stop, stop ripping my chair. All right, maybe some basic color pencils for the details. I don't know. Am I gonna ruin it? Maybe. That's entirely possible. And then just do that real quick, and then maybe call it a night. 
buttons. Yeah, that took a lot longer than I thought it would. Because I get just much more your angry face, yeah. <laughs> oh, I thought I could capture it. <laughs> That's my, like, I think it's, for me, it's like, I'm not amused. It's the, it's very much the unamused and, and maybe angry too. A little bit of all of it. Just a little bit of color. I'm, I'm not going to be able to accomplish a ton with it, but just a few little highlights. Oh, I need to, I need to sharpen my pencils. I really only ever use um, colored pencils for just like a couple little highlights here and there. I've never been big on using them a whole lot, but you get some interesting when you just want something quick and down and dirty. Ears always have a lot of red in them. I actually really like drawing roses and ears for whatever reason. Are those rose art? These are Posca pencils. I got them because they were on special some time ago, several years ago, from um, from Dick Blick. On their website, they were having some kind of a sale. These were sale items, so I decided to get them. And they're pretty good. I mean, they're lasting forever because so I don't use them a whole lot, but these, again, this is just this paper for drawing on. It's pretty darn nice. Feels really good. rules here. Not going for a particular level of realism at all. Do I know who Boris Vallejo is? Ah, um, the name sounds familiar to me, but I am not uh, coming up with it. Is this an artist? Or uh, do tell. I'm always looking for good uh, things to check out, recommendations and such. Anyway, I didn't really need to sharpen my pencils. fantasy painter and he painted lots of movie posters. Oh cool. He swears by purple and blue undertones for flesh colors. Yeah, I love uh flesh colors are fascinating to me. I love layering. There's even uh greens when you get down to it. Underneath our like our veins. How depending on your tone of skin too of course. But yeah, there can even be greens, there's yellows, there's so much color in your face and people. It's kind of crazy. I think that people are fun to experiment with. They're tricky in the sense that like we know our brains instinctively know what what people should look like so we are very particular we recognize when things aren't right pretty easily pretty fast 
um, we're not fooled too well, but to uh, distort people and really play with the colors that might be there or might not. But just really pushing and pulling some of that fun stuff. It's fun. Yeah, and people are weird. Ears are weird, noses are weird. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's a, something that is... Uh, um, for a while I was teaching some young art kid, some kids art. They were as, like, it was uh, 9 to 11 year olds, and occasionally one of them would decide they wanted to try to do a portrait of someone, and especially if they were painting it, it's getting them to not just paint it all one like peach or brownish tone through the whole over the whole thing or um or like just having and then adding black to that to create a shadow and just putting a shadow on the neck like it's a it's tricky it's there's a lot to it but then sometimes you know you gotta simplify it down to you need to Maybe just a little bit of dark blue for her shirt. Okay, I like I'm <laughs> more or less satisfied with this. It is a little bit of a mess, but this is fun. Oh my goodness, I know. <laughs> it's very dramatic. Super classy looking. Oh, thank you. That's very, very nice compliment. I appreciate that. Sometimes things go either slower than you think they were will, or you think something's going to be simple, and then you end up kind of struggling with it a little bit more than you thought you would. I'm not sure. How even her eyes are. <laughs> This is another experimenting with medium and playing. I just think that this is where, for me, a sketchbook really shines and really has the capacity to be pretty much helpful. He's in the experimenting. Yes, I hear you. Hi. <laughs> Just to come over to make sure that I heard him the first time. <laughs> My co-star. <laughs> I know. I know. I haven't forgotten you're there. What's up? It's not the greatest thing ever, but I'm pretty happy. It, you know, fun and screw around. Just a little warmth over here and... That doesn't really help. That's just, that yellow color is just like death warmed over. This is a great set of colors because there are quite a lot of colors. Um, 
<laughs> there's my cat putting himself right in front of the uh, camera. Apologies for any cat butts. Do you think that's where you should stand? Huh? I think that's where babies go. There you go. Or not. Or just, you know, stand on the computer. That's that's fine too. <laughs> right in front of the camera. Uh, Oh my goodness. Anyway, <laughs> that's my cat, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think it's real because she's looking way out into the dis distance at everyone else's food at their tables. Yes. <laughs> I, the one thing, for all the colors that are in this, there's 36 colors. There's a decent amount of colors here. But there is not a really great shade of pink. Not really. That's really quite irksome to me. I would like to have a nice shade of pink. Like this is this is a this very pastel is not particularly the color that I want. It's the only color I have for it. So I mean, you can blend them. I don't usually what I normally use what uh, pencils for is if I am doing watercolor and I just want like a really hard line of something somewhere to pull out. That is the most likely place that I will ever use. Colored pencils. This size. Come. Oh. That's a dollar. Everything I'm trying to fix, I think I'm just making it worse. Probably just time to call it. Her eyes just keep getting like bigger and again more insect like. It was like magic. I don't, didn't even see what happened, but now her eyes are like straight. Oh, thanks. Um, I just spent a minute just staring at what my camera is seeing on the screen of the computer. Um, which is much different than what I see when I look at it from this angle, which is not ideal. But it's still, she still definitely kind of had a bug eye thing going. I, I don't, <laughs> for real, um, making things worse. I really just don't, I think that at this stage, it's like one of those situations I was mentioning earlier where you just get so far in the drawing and your core structure isn't quite correct. And at a certain point, there's not much going back from that. 
once you get to a certain point of having rendered a lot of things. So that's why it's important to get your drawing right first. <laughs> And then do all this stuff, all the fun details, after you know that you got it, where you want it, where it should be. She's becoming a little bit more of a cartoon as I go. Maybe that's the best thing I can do for her. Oh my goodness, Mr. Watson. I promise you're not gonna starve. I know you don't believe me. <laughs> this expression, my goodness. Hello. Joining me for making a mess. Want to get your paws in there? Blend some colors for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was painting Emma Myers for Wednesday, but her face is actually kind of spooky looking. Like her eyes are like fairy eyes or something, and her head is kind of weirdly shaped too. So I stopped, but I was going to paint in pink and blue. Ooh, I like that. And she does have a very, like, it's a very heart shaped face, isn't it? Um, I think I'm thinking of the right person. Oh my goodness, you're such a Pam. Um, yeah, it's really hard. Uh, it can be very tricky to really capture a person. Um, and especially when they have unusual features. And you're always going to compare it to what our brains know, like something should be, or shouldn't be and it gets uh can get kind of weird and difficult to to quite get it right or at least what we feel like is right and, you know it's like with us it's not it's not a perfect drawing it's not a perfect representation of this poor girl um you literally are standing right on right on her face you are standing right on my face my, my character's face, not mine. <laughs> I thought I was doing it bad, but no, her head is weird. It's a good weird though. Yeah, I, you know, stepping back <laughs> and taking a look helps a lot. Like when I finally am just looking at the screen and I could see that, oh yeah, that eye is not right. That, that little bit of distance and then even completely walking away from something and coming back to it. I, you are still standing, right? Right on me drawing. <coughs> I think he's trying to get me to stop. <laughs> All right, don't you don't need to show the world your butt. Come on. There you go. <laughs> uh, he's a ham sometimes. It's, this is maybe moving a little bit as I go along here. And it's, yeah, it's okay to not be. It's always okay to not be perfect when we're just doing stuff. And I always have to remind myself of that just as often also. <coughs> Excuse 
Excuse me. <clears throat> I think I inhaled a cat hair. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Slightly better. Maybe. Slightly. She definitely looks very cartoony now because her eyes are like way, way big in terms of proportions. Uma Thurman eyes, yeah, she's got, she's got great features. She is such an interesting, another one of those interesting faces. Exactly nail it, but I think I'm actually I'm actually pretty happy with where it is at the moment. Shockingly, managed to get it somewhere. And this is my instance of uh, taking something that isn't working out the way that you are happy with, and kind of just going with it and see what you can make out of it. I think one of the best things we can do is not get too precious about our work, which still allows us plenty of uh, space and time for then experimentation and growth. Definitely growth also. This is a sketch from my orange period. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's, that's, we're done. Okay, well, yeah, got a couple little pages filled in, messed around with some new sketchbook and materials. Didn't even use my pen that I was excited to try on this paper too, so that'll have to be for another time. But yeah, I think that's a good place to, good note to end things on. We are, what time is it? Oh my goodness, almost two hours in to messing around. Sketchbook drawn. And thank you, thank you for hanging out with me while I make a mess of things. <laughs> um, it's fun, it's just, you know, an excuse to create and get those juices flowing. And I will be, I should be back at this Thursday morning, usually 10 a.m. Central Time. So I'll be back, back doing something, maybe working on a painting at that point. I'm not certain yet. I will figure it out by that time. Uh, but yeah, I hope you have a great night and thank you for watching. Um, and all the creative energy to you, hopefully maybe create something fun this week and have some 
just sketchbook crazy time. But yeah, have a good one. Bye.